Welcome mommies, daddies, nannies, and grannies. I'm Miss Jen, and I'm here to help you potty train your toddler. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about the common mistakes that we're making when we're trying to potty train a toddler. I invite you to subscribe to my channel so you'll get updates and notifications when I post new videos. Some thumbs up are always nice. You might already know this, but I have been a nanny and a child caregiver for over 39 years. That's a lot of potty training. So I'm here to help you with all the tips and tricks that I know that I've learned through the years and I'm here to share them with you today. Let's dive right in and get started. Okay, mommies and daddies and nannies and grannies and caregivers and teachers and preschool aides and helpers. Let's talk about the mistakes that we make when we're trying to potty train a toddler. Speaking of timing and getting to the toilet or the potty on time before there's an accident. Timing is everything. Toddlers don't understand the concept of time just yet. So they don't really understand or grasp the concept of how long it's gonna be before the next potty break or how long they're gonna have to wait or hold it until they're provided another opportunity to go sit on their potty, especially when you're out in public. They don't really know, oh, where are we? I'm not at home where my potty or my toilet is. So they don't really know when the next potty break is coming. Even if you say, okay, in 10 minutes, we're going to the potty, or after this merry-go-round ride, we're going to use the restroom, that's not time concept for them. They don't know how long that time equals how much I have in my bladder and how long I can hold that. So we, as the adult, need to be providing the timing for them. We need to have a schedule for our toddlers, especially in the beginning. We can't rely on our kiddos to know how long they're gonna have to hold it. So we have to set a timer or a potty watch or a clock or our phone alarms every hour. In the beginning, yes, every hour. This is more just for regularity, consistency, predictability for your toddler so that they start getting into a routine. Your toddler will start to understand, oh, we go to the potty every hour, or oh, we always go potty after lunch, and we always go potty right when we wake up in the morning, and mommy always puts me on the potty before bath, and mommy always makes me go potty after snack time, or after my Mickey Mouse favorite show is over. When your child starts to learn when these times are that they're expecting to be taken to the toilet or being asked or prompted to go sit on the potty, they're gonna start to realize, okay, this is routine. This is, I know what to predict now. I know when it's coming. Kiddos need a schedule. Toddlers thrive on predictability. Children need consistency and a normal routine and structure. So in the beginning, we're gonna to try to provide that for our toddler by taking them every hour on the hour. Even if your child doesn't have a full bladder, it just helps with the process of learning and routine and it provides more practice, 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 practice. Repetition, repetition, repetition. You're gonna get tired of this routine. Your toddler's gonna get tired of this routine. They might resist, they might throw a fit. They might say, no, 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 mommy, I don't need to go potty. No, I'm all done potty, I already went potty. Yeah, you went an hour ago, but it's time again. They're gonna, they're gonna fight and fuss about it in the beginning unless we make it fun for them, which I'm going to mention later in the video. But at first, hourly visits to the potty is just going to help them learn the schedule. Unless they've had a lot to drink, you might wanna go every half hour if they've had a big bottle or a big sippy cup of something, water or juice or milk, and you know they're gonna have a full bladder, then every half hour, you know, sometimes. But I think an hour is just a good time gauge to begin with. Then you can eventually start transitioning to every hour and a half every 90 minutes, every two hours, whatever. You'll start to learn your child's bladder capacity and bladder urges and what time of day they most likely need to go potty. Now, you've heard me talk about this in my other video, my potty training boot camp parts one through five. I definitely recommend you check that one out. But there is definitely one mistake that I'd like to bring up right now, and that is not offering incentive for your toddler to learn this process not offering a reward, not offering some sort of prize or treasure, gifts, a snack, a treat, a candy, a toy, a reward, some kind of incentive has to be there for your child to want to even sit on the toilet in the first place. Sitting on the toilet is just like sitting on a chair or sitting on the floor or sitting on their blanket or sitting on the edge of their bed. It's just sitting, it's a place to sit for them. We're trying to teach them that we want them to sit there and be productive, get the pee-pee out or the poo-poo out, but we have to make sitting on the potty in the first place something that they want to do and they are willing to work for that. 
treat, a reward. And we have to provide something for them to make them want that. So just the act of sitting on the potty isn't going to be the reward for them. That's not gonna be fun enough or rewarding enough for them. It's not gonna be enough of an incentive. So having a prize or a candy or a little treat or a reward right there at the ready, when they're sitting on the potty and right when the pee-pee comes out, have that reward immediately available to them. Have a treat or a candy or a prize or a sticker hand stamp, little ink hand stamps like you get at the zoo or at school. Sometimes they'll do a little hand stamp for a special achievement. Temporary tattoos, little tchotchkes and toys and trinkets. Anything that you can do to get your child to want that, whatever that is, it's, it's a reinforcer, it's a reward for them. Whatever you can offer them that is special enough for them to want to work for that. Not all kids care about M&Ms or Smarties or Skittles or those little yogurt melts, or goldfish crackers, especially if it's something that they already get anyway for doing other good behaviors, or it's just their snack that they have at home. Oh, they always have goldfish crackers. They always have M&Ms available to them. This reinforcer, reward, treat, needs to be something new and different and unique and rare and special and magical and specifically related just to potty time, just to toileting, just for sitting on the potty at first, just getting them to sit on the potty, especially some kiddos who are resistant to even sit on the toilet or potty. Those are the kiddos that we need to maybe offer a reward or some kind of little bribe, maybe a special storybook that you're using or something, a special song or a little, little toy or something that they can hold and, and keep them busy and entertained just to get them to learn how to sit there longer. Some kiddos will sit on the potty and then pop right up. All done, I don't, I don't wanna sit here, this is boring. I got, I got stuff to do, I gotta go play. I'm busy, I'm a busy kid. So giving them a reward or something just for sitting in the beginning is fine, but you'll eventually want to gradually transition that to only getting a reward after they've had a potty success, pee pee or poo poo coming out. Even if it's just a couple of drops, just in the beginning, they're just getting used to releasing those bladder muscles and releasing their pelvic floor muscles and relaxing and letting things flow. Some kiddos have a hard time letting go and letting it flow. They don't feel right about it. It feels weird to them. It feels like something's falling out or they're dropping something, something's coming out of their body, a part of their body. So ease them into it. Don't rush them, don't pressure them. Don't even really teach them to push. Oh, push, come on, push it out. You can push the pee-pee out. Because that's not really what peeing is about. It's more about relaxing and letting things go. So my point is giving them a reward or a treat or some kind of small little prize or something special to get them happy and excited about using the potty. If they learn that they get a little treat or a reward or something for sitting on the potty, it's gonna be something they wanna do. Oh, I wanna go back and do that again. Even maybe have a little jar of candies or M&Ms or lollipops or whatever your specific treat is. Have that jar visible in the bathroom or wherever their potty is so that they can see it and go, oh, I want one of those candies right now. Oh, I want one of those little toys right now. Or I want a sticker right now. I see them right there. And it's gonna make them go, oh, I see my stickers. I wanna go potty. Uh, Mommy, can I have a sticker? Yes, you can. Let's go sit on the potty and get your sticker. On that note, the next mistake that we make when we're potty training our toddlers is using the word no too much. Negative words, no, didn't, can't, don't, won't. No, you don't get that toy because you didn't go pee. No, you can't have that until you sit on the toilet. No, you didn't go potty so you don't get your candy. That's using don't and can't and won't and not and no too much. We need to cut those negative words out of the dialogue when we're having conversations with our toddlers. We need to keep it so positive and so upbeat and so enthusiastic and engaged and intriguing and fun. We have to make this something they want to do. It's not a chore, it's not a boring task. It's something that they enjoy and they'll get more out of it and they'll try harder and they'll achieve more and they'll have more successes if we make it fun for them. So the mistake of saying no or can't or you can't have that or no, we, don't, did, we didn't do a success so no, you don't get your treat or no, you didn't do that so no, you can't have that right now, that's only for using the potty. If a kid comes and says, I want a Pez or I want a lollipop or I want a candy or a sticker or a tattoo or a treat, say yes. Let's go sit on the potty so you can earn it. Another huge mistake that we're making when we're potty training our toddlers is punishing or scolding. Potty training is messy, y'all. There's gonna be accidents. There's gonna be pee and poo in places that we don't want it. On the floor, in the bed, on their clothes, in your hair, on the couch, on the carpet, anywhere but the toilet. Accidents are going to happen. Read my lips. Accidents are going to happen. 
no matter what kind of perfect angel unicorn child you have, accidents happen during the potty training process. You're gonna be cleaning up pee. You're gonna be cleaning up poop. You're gonna start to feel like your child is doing it on purpose. My child knows where the toilet is. Why won't they just go in the potty? My daughter always pees at this time of day. She's doing it on purpose. Oh, my son likes to aim on his toys and pees on the carpet on purpose. It's not on purpose. Yes, there might be some testing and some boundary checking that they might be doing with peeing in weird places or pooping in weird places, but they're not doing it to be a bad child. They're not doing it intentionally. They're not being a brat. There's no such thing as a brat, okay? They're just learning and they're trying new stuff and they're testing the things like, what if I go here, what happens? What if I pee here, what happens? What if I pee right here in my pants on the couch, what happens? They're just testing. So we need to keep redirecting and we keep showing them and teaching them and providing lots and lots of opportunities and repetitious practice for them to sit on the potty, try again, try again. We're gonna get this right. We're gonna sit on that potty and we're gonna keep trying. If they have an accident in the kitchen, oopsie. We don't say cuss words. We don't scold them. They're not in trouble. They're not gonna get a spanking. There's no such thing as punishing your child for having an accident. They can't help it. They can't help it any more than you can help a sneeze. So if you don't want to be punished or spanked or scolded for a sneeze, then don't spank or punish or scold your child for a potty accident. The more we scold, the more negativity and timeouts and spankings and punishments we give a child, it becomes a negative scenario. So we don't want that to be associated with potty training. Everything we do with potty training needs to be fun and upbeat and enlightening and inspiring and happy and joyful. So don't scold your child for potty accidents. Big mistake. You can do this with a little bit of patience, some compassion, and a lot of love. I'm Miss Jen. Thanks for joining Nanny Knowledge with Miss Jen. Don't forget to subscribe.